Good evening, it's Charlie from Silence of Talkies with the next episode in a series during which I will investigate why a silent star's talkie stardom did not stick. This episode will focus on Evelyn Preer. My fascination with Evelyn's career began on a day in lockdown in 2020 when I saw Within Our Gates on YouTube. I'm ashamed to say that before that, I did not know about El Evelyn or her esteemed director, Oscar Micheaux. The film, made in 1919 and released in 1920, is the earliest surviving film by an African-American director featuring a predominantly African-American cast, including its heroine and leading lady, Evelyn Preer. The print that I saw on YouTube that night was completely silent, lacking even a musical accompaniment added later. I sat the entire running time of the movie absolutely enthralled and glued to my screen. I will go into more detail about the film in a few minutes, but even with this incredible story that brought light to the numerous instances of racism that continuously plagued African Americans at that time, and provided a positive portrayal of African Americans in direct contrast to their portrayal in Birth of a Nation, I was mostly enthralled by Evelyn's performance as Sylvia Landry, a complicated, multifaceted woman that bravely fought and campaigned for the members of her community while masking the pain caused by crippling experiences that she experienced in her youth. More about Sylvia Landry in that film later. When I started this channel slash page, I knew that one of the actresses who I wanted to research was Evelyn because I'd never stopped thinking about her performance in Within Our Gate since then, and I knew that she made a few talkies. So, let's begin. Evelyn was born as Evelyn Jarvis in 1896 in Vicks Vicksburg, Mississippi. Her mother was Blanche Jarvis, and we know that she had a younger sister and a younger brother who unfortunately did not reach adulthood. According to Evelyn's daughter, Dr. Francesca Thompson, more on her later, when Evelyn's father died in 1906, Blanche took her children away from Vicksburg to Chicago to avoid the racism that they were sure to encounter if they remained in Mississippi. Once they got to Chicago, Blanche began serving as an apostolic street preacher where she would stand on the street corner and preach her faith, which often included singing and acting. She began taking Evelyn with her, who, according to Thompson, Evelyn would cry on cue and sing beautifully to attract viewers on the street. Even at a young age, Evelyn was a natural. Evelyn went on to join a drama group in high school called The Lady American Minstrels and toured locally with, with the school productions. During one of these tours, a Chicago nightclub owner named Frank Preer saw her and was impressed with her and her talent. Once Evelyn graduated from high school, her and Frank Preer were married, and she legally changed her name and professionally changed her name to Evelyn Preer around 1915. It was nightclub, nightclub gigs and her husband's clubs that changed Evelyn's life and put her into the direction of a new career. Frank invited his friend, former Pullman train porter, homesteader, and now author, Oscar Micheaux, to hear Evelyn sing. Micheaux was, at that time, trying to get one of his recent novels, The Homesteader, which detailed his experiences as a homesteader with his first wife in South Dakota, made into a film. He initially consulted the African-American film company, the Lincoln Motion Picture Company, but his producers wanted too much control, and the project never panned out. So Michaud decided to make his own motion picture company and make the movies he wanted to make in his own way. Michaud was so impressed with Evelyn's talent on the stage that he cast her to play the female lead in the film, The Homesteader, modeled after his former wife, Orleans. Evelyn knocked it out of the park. The film and Evelyn got great reviews when it was released in 1919. While the film is now lost, it served as a turning point in Evelyn's career. Michaud immediately cast her as the lead in his next feature, Within Our Gates. According to journalist Herb Boyd, Evelyn became Michaud's muse, and he could, could have developed Within Our Gates with her in mind to portray its heroine. Michaud was quoted around this time as saying, Evelyn could play any role assigned to her, and she did so cheerfully and without argument, end quote. Michaud also began heavily promoting Evelyn as his studio's leading lady, referring to her in print as the first lady of the screen or the first lady of the black screen. Evelyn suddenly publicly achieved a distinction that she had already achieved by making The Homesteader. She was the first African-American movie star in America. The show's inclusion of Evelyn's new title in print was wise for many reasons. First, the heavy publicity would make more people aware of his films and bring a wider audience and to see within our gates, which it did. Second, 
The publicity would make the public curious about Evelyn and her talent and make them want to see this new first lady of the screen act on the screen. When I say the public, I refer to the public of all races in America. Michaud strived to have his films cross racial barriers and penetrate the wall of segregation that separated black artists in America from stardom and success. His promotion of Evelyn before Within Our Gates was released was his initial chipping away at that wall that would allow for the film's release to begin pushing through it. Within Our Gates, as I mentioned earlier, was Michaud's direct response to D.W. Griffith's 1916 blockbuster, The Birth of a Nation which claimed to be a feature-length film about the effect that the Civil War had on two families from the North and the South, leading up to Lincoln's assassination with the founding of the Ku Klux Klan lightly mentioned towards the end. What it actually was was a highly inaccurate, untrue, and extremely racist depiction of African Americans and a glorification of the Klan. Even worse, most of the actors playing Black characters in the film were actually white actors in blackface. The movie has been credited by countless historians as leading to an, actual, to an actual rebirth of the Klan and an increase in lynchings, murders, and other horrific examples of violence against African Americans in America. Meanwhile, according to film historians in the documentary, Michaud, the superhero of black filmmaking, which I highly recommend, seeing what Birth of a Nation was doing to black communities all over America, Michaud decided to get to work. He decided to write and direct a film that portrays African-American characters in a positive light as normal, everyday people. However, he wanted to be clear that while they were normal, everyday people, they had to constantly grapple with extreme racism, not just in the South, but also in the North. He also drew attention to that racism and how it manifested in horrific acts of murder and violence on innocent members of Black communities. At the center of the story is Evelyn as Sylvia Landry, an educated woman from the South who comes to the North looking to visit her duplicitous cousin Alma, portrayed by the also excellent actress Flo Clements, who actually later became the first African-American woman to serve in the Illinois Congress. Alma betrays Sylvia to steal her fiancé and Sylvia returns home. Meanwhile, she meets a teacher at a Black school that is in desperate need of funding, so she returns back to the North to fundraise for the children. After saving a child's life, a wealthy white woman commends Sylvia's bravery, ignores her racist rich friends, and decides to give Sylvia the money to save the school. Meanwhile, a man tries to blackmail Sylvia based on her past, which was full of events that were all results of violent racism that her and her family experienced. I don't want to sit here and summarize the entire film, but be forewarned that Michelle went all the way with his accurate portrayals of deplorable violence that African Americans were facing across the country, and the scenes, although shocking, are all the more moving and necessary for Michaud to bravely convey the truth of what was happening to Black communities all over America at that time. In a flashback that shows Sylvia's supposed questionable past, we learn that she would, did not actually have a questionable past. She was almost raped by a white man who realized he was her biological father, while her father and mother were being lynched simultaneously right outside her window. I cannot stress enough the power of the scene, in particular, and Evelyn's acting in it, and everyone else's acting in it, for that matter. And this disgusting old man who ends up being her father is attempting to sexually assault her while she knows that her father and mother and younger brother are being lynched right outside her window. The emotion that she conveys is just... <laughs> I don't have the words. Due to its violent nature and the multiple triggers it contains, I'm not going to show that scene to you here today. I do recommend that you view the film in its entirety on YouTube, as it will be an experience you will never forget. As usual, a link to Within Our Gates and other examples of Evelyn's work will be placed in the description of my YouTube videos about Evelyn. You can also find links to my YouTube channel in my bio on TikTok and Instagram. But back to Evelyn. I'm going to show you two clips from Within Our Gates back to back. As you can see in the first clip, Evelyn, as Sylvia, is overjoyed to see her fiancé at the start of the film. Notice how natural she is and the ease at which she can move from one emotion to another. Note also the carefully constructed physical nuances that she brings to Sylvia's face and body in the scene. The slight pause while she reflects on Conrad's physical rebuff is what really struck me here as well as the tearful plea she makes afterward. Stay tuned with me now or next for Evelyn Freer, part two.